Last Man Standing. Welcome back to The Last Man Standing, where the only way to stand tall is to win it all. I'm Dirk McGregor. At the beginning of the season, we had 23 hopefuls all vying to be the last man standing. Now it's down to two. Trevor, what would you do if you won a million dollars? I'd probably uh, I'd pay off my student loans and, uh, I don't know, buy a wave runner. Cody, what would you do if you won a million dollars? Pump it up and pump it out! Pump it up and pump it out! Well said. All right, are you ready for your final challenge? In my hand is a Motorola cell phone. I want you to call my wife and tell her it's over. It's ringing. Uh, uh, hello, hello? S Samantha? Yes, this is uh, about Dirk. He doesn't love you anymore. It's 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 over. Trevor, congratulations. You are the last man standing. Cody, thank you so much. Maybe try again next year. Trevor, you just won a million dollars. How do you feel? She started crying pretty hard. Good f***er. Travel as a hypothesis of fact Are splitting two facets of the same theory One in which no one can change the past And one in which the past can be changed On the condition that the present changes too Like when old Biff gave young Biff the almanac And fucked up everything and back the future too This means new dimensions From however the past would lean And if that's true then That would probably mean there's one where Dave wears yellow shirts, one where he wears a crown, one where he only reads while hanging upside down, one where he gets ice cream for being hella tight, one where he gets aroused just by flying kites. How we doing? We doing good? Okay, let's pick it up then. One where he has fuzzy hands, one where his name is Lance, one where if he smiles he also craps his pants. One where no one likes him, one where he is extra shy One where he's convicted of triple homicide <laughs> Dave, how did you kill three people and why? It's not what it looks like Fantastic Help me. One, two One where an old boogie board is all he has to wear One where he died a gruesome death while playing truth or dare One where he is hit by waves, one where he's made of brass One where he can only dine on shards of broken glass well, Go ahead, eat it Eat it. That's it. Good! One, two! One where he chokes on pens, one where he golfs on Mars. Or had stock and crystal Pepsi and GM cars. Or asked to pull a battleship even though he's not that strong. Thanks for listening to Dave's Dimension Song. So the previous owner is going to leave all of their appliances, like we talked about. Um, the wood panel floors look like they're going to be here on the third of the month, um, like we said. and. Well, we already talked about the high vaulted ceilings. What do you think? Shall we buy a house? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll take it. Great.
I get your name, please? My name is Amir Rassist. And I am a fashion designer. Clothing is like skin. My skin that I give to the world. And I hope that no one wants to take off my skin. My style at first was very complex. Uh, muy Byzantine. But I find that there is um, beauty in... Como se canje? Simplicity. And that simplicity was my name, Rasith. My clothing is not the latest. I want the uh, mother with your children, the man on the bus, the little boy at the playground with the popsicle. I want the whole world to know that I am racist and that they can be racist too. This is a fellow fashion designer, my friend Jean-Luc Petitful. Jean-Luc Petitful. My, uh, my father was a fashion designer. He uh, was the great Petitful. Uh, when his factory mysteriously burned down, uh, it gave my family a bad name. People come to me on the street and they say, why be uh, a Petitful? And I tell them because it is all that I know. Now I know I will not be ever as big a portfolio as my father, but I think that is why I need to collaborate with Emil. If the races and the pitifuls can work together, uh, there is no telling what we can accomplish. In the fall we put a line of jeans for women and children, uh, very light color, very muted. Yeah, almost uh, no color. Almost no color at all. And what are you going to call them? White, White pride, pride jeans. We now return to Holton McMurray the worst comedy duo of all time, on PBS. By 1939, Holden McMurray's film career had stagnated after brutal reviews for Swollen Privates and Coconuts, which led to the duo to return to the theater. After the success of Abbott and Costello's Who's on First Routine, Holden McMurray released What Time's the Ballet Jerkoff, scorned by most critics due to its lack of timing and subtlety. Hey, Holt! Say, I was just curious. What time's the ballet, Jerkoff? Hey! What's with calling me a jerk-off? I didn't. It's a jerk-off ballet. He's a Russian choreographer. His name's Jerkoff. Oh. Well, it's at 9.30. Great. I know it sounded like I called you a jerk-off earlier. I can well, see you like... Yeah, I can see you did. Conf... I, uh... You cleared that up. Apology accepted. accepted. Most assume their lack of talent was in itself a satire. However, soon audiences realized their ineptitude was no joke. Holt frequently suffered from vertigo when would fall off the stage. McMurray's alcoholism caused many shows to end early, often due to his projectile vomiting or his penchant for getting into fistfights with audience members. McMurray's drinking soon took its toll on the duo. The final moments of their partnership was captured on a recently unearthed audio recording while filming a scene of their last unfinished film, Holt and McMurray's Monster Sleepover. Hey, I'm all right. I'm all right. I got, I got one thing to say. Say, what kind of name is Lugosi anyway, huh? Huh? Sounds like a Hun name. The Hun's the name, everyone! The Hun's the name! Are we ready to go again? Hey, shut up! I don't need your help. Hey. Hey, Hulk. Hey. Why don't you take out it? Take it out. Show it to them, boy. I'll see what they got downstairs. After the split, Holt tried to salvage his career as a solo act evolving to deal with more mature themes, the darkest of which were captured on the spoken word albums What's With The Room Full Of C**ts and What The Jews Can't Control. Struggling to stay in the public eye, McMurray was creator, host, and head writer for Play It By Ear, a game show where contestants were airdropped into the Bering Strait and forced to find their way back all while blindfolded. The show did poorly. To their final days, Holt and McMurray were disillusioned into thinking they had earned respect and fame. They were never in on the worst kept secret in Hollywood, that they were the worst comedy duo of all time. <laughs>